Nvidia says the RTX 5070 is the smartest choice for 1080p gaming. AMD says the RX 9070 XT is the fastest, period. And you're sitting there like, just tell me what to buy. So that's exactly what we are going to do. We are testing both GPUs across 16 games and measured FPS, power draw, efficiency, price per frame and real, not fake retail price. If you think this is just another GPU comparison video, you're wrong. This is a battle between raw power and real value. And by the end, you will know which GPU actually deserves your money. All right, let's talk about prices, or better said, marketing fiction. AMD tells you the RX 9070 XT is just $600 and with the RTX 5070, $550. Cute numbers, but let's get real. Go on any website right now, seriously, the RX 9070 XT is going for $8050 to $9900, the RTX 5070 is chilling at $605. Bucks. That's not a slight difference, that's a 250 to 300 slap in the face. So yeah, MSRP is a myth and if you're making decision between on that, you're being played. And the worst part, this happens before you even get to play Cyberpunk or God of War, you're already losing and you haven't even installed drivers. Let's get into performance. 16 games, ultra customized settings, 1080p, 2 GPUs and zero mercy. Starting with Remnant 2, RTX 5070 hits 170 FPS, RX 9070 XT gets 169, practically the same. But then in Cyberpunk 2077, things shift. RTX pulls 191, while RX jumps to 223. That's a huge 32 FPS lead. Black Meat Wukong, 96 for RTX, 110 for RX. F124, this is one wild. 281 versus 305. Hogwarts Legacy, RTX gives 143, AMD delivers 184. Major difference. Then we got Dragon Age Veilguard, 142 versus 153. Small win, still a win. Total War Warhammer 3, RTX at 185, RX at 248. Huge gap. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, surprisingly close, 130 versus 135. Stalker 2 shows a gap, 93 versus 101. Marvel Rivals, not dramatic, 163 versus 177. Callisto Protocol, dead even, both at 239 FPS. Returnal, 172 vs 195. God of War Ragnarok, big win again for AMD, 172 vs 223 FPS. Civilization 7, wild numbers, 325 vs 340. Assassin's Creed Mirage, another AMD stomp, 184 vs 224. And finally, Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster, RTX at 189, RX at 198. The average across all 16 games, RTX 5070 delivers 180 FPS, RX 9070 XT brings 202. That's a 12% lead for AMD. Respectable, but the real question is, how much does it cost you? Alright, so the RX 9070 XT is faster, we get it. But now comes the part most people ignore. How much are you paying for every single frame? At fake MSRP, the fantasy numbers, RTX 5070 gives you one frame for 3.06 bucks. RX 9070 XT is slightly cheaper at 2.97, not bad. And the actual wins on paper, of course. But in the real world, that's a different story. With real US retail prices, the RX 9070 XT jumps to 4.27 per frame, that's a big jump. RTX 5070 just 3.37. Suddenly the car that looked cheaper becomes the one that quietly robs you. You're paying 90 cents more per frame with AMD. Multiply that by 200 frames per second, that's a difference you feel and your wallet definitely feels it too. And since we hate price deception, we made a tool that cuts through the lies. It's a frame per dollar calculator, just plug in the actual price you see in stores and it tells you exactly which card gives you better value. It's free, takes 10 seconds and it's linked right below this video and in the pinned comment. Try it after the video, but spoiler alert, it may confirm some harsh truths. Let's talk about power, because your GPU isn't just playing games, it's also heating your room and draining your electricity. Across all 16 games at 1080p, the RTX 5070 had an average power draw of 209 watts, the RX 9070 XT 282 watts. That's a 73 watts difference and you feel it. So for every second of gameplay, AMD is basically turning on a desk fan you didn't ask for. Now, 
Let's look at efficiency, how much power it takes to render a single frame. RX 9070 XT 1.40 watts per frame. RTX 5070 1.16 watts per frame. That means Nvidia gives you more frames for less power. In fact, it's 17% more efficient per frame. So even if AMD is faster in raw FPS, it's also eating more power for every single one. And unless you're gaming in a freezer, that's not ideal. And here's the part nobody talks about in benchmarks, noise and airflow. That extra 73 watts DRX 9070 XT pulls, it's not just numbers on a chart. That's heat your case had to deal with. That's your fan spinning louder. That's your whole setup running hotter constantly. If you're building in a compact case or running a mid-range power supply, that power overhead becomes a real problem. The RTX 5070 with 209 watts average is just easier to cool, quieter, simpler, it fits in more builds and doesn't demand premium airflow just to stay stable. It's not just about wattage, it's about how much peace and flexibility you get for that wattage. And if you're gaming in a room that already feels like a toaster, you know exactly what I mean. So finally, here's the final score. The RX 9070 XT is faster. That's not up for debate. In 16 games, it delivers 12% more FPS on average in 1080p. That's real, that's measurable. But it also costs more. Not a little more, a lot more. It draws more power, runs hotter, needs stronger cooling, and takes up more space in your case. It's the high-performance muscle car. Loud, powerful, but hungry. The RTX 5070, it's quieter, it's cooler. It fits into more builds. It gives you better value per frame, per vote, and of course, per dollar. It's not the fastest, but it's the smartest buy. So, which one should you buy? Well, if you want absolute speed and do not care about cost, heat, or efficiency, go with RX 9070 XT. But if you're building a balanced PC, one that makes sense for 1080p gaming, streaming, creating, and keeping your room under 40 degrees Celsius in summer, then the RTX 5070 is the one that respects your money. You still unsure? Use the frame per dollar calculator we'll link below. It's simple, fast, and it tells you the truth with math. If this video helped you make a decision, hit that like button. It tells algorithm this video was actually useful. And if you're still not sure which card to pick, do not worry, because we are not finished yet. Up next, we are testing both of these GPUs in full ray tracing mode. Same games, same setup, just way more stress on the cards. We are going to find out which one handles next scan lighting and which one melts under pressure. So make sure to subscribe, check out the calculator in the description and let us know in the comments which card would you buy for 1080p and why. See you in the next one.